Hey friends, welcome to One Little Coder. In this video, we're going to talk about ChatGPT hallucination. So I'm going to tell you what is hallucination in the context of machine learning and language generation. And we are going to see what kind of hallucination ChatGPT is currently doing and uh, what, what, why do we have to know about it? First of all, what is hallucination in machine learning or uh, in, in the context of text generation? Hallucination in the context of text generation is when a large language model gives you something or any NLP model gives you something which almost looks correct or factual, but it is not factual. The large language model has made it up. It is quite a popular thing in abstractive summarization. Now, if you have heard about abstractive summarization, abstractive summarization is a process in which you have got a lot of text instead of picking one or two components from it, you summarize it in such a way that the text is coherent, but you reduce the size of the, the larger input text that you have given. And abstractive summarization is prone to hallucination. And I'll link this paper in the description. So there are a lot of papers that are talking about only reducing abstract hallucination for abstractive summarization. So you can see it is well known fact that abstractive summaries are subject to hallucination, including material that is not supported by the original text. Now, the question is for abstractive summarization, it is fine at least, but in the context of chat GPT, the problem is everybody believes whatever it gives out. And that is the, that is the, that is a problem here because the hallucination in the summarization world is very easy to point out how you've got a larger text. You give the text to a summarization model and the summarization model gives you an output text. Now, anybody who sees the output text, which is the summarized text can actually go back and then check with the larger text and then know that, you know what, this was not there in the original text. It has been made up by the model. This is hallucination. But the problem with large language model is now you do not know what is that input text and you believe anything and everything that comes out of the large language model, just in this case, chat GPT. So it is so coherent. It is so beautifully viewed together. You believe that it is true. For example, let's take a very recent example that we came across. What is the example? The example is this. Saumit Chintala, you know that he's um, um, the co-creator of PyTorch, which is a very popular deep learning library. So you can, if you see, when you go to chat GPT, like this was, this was tweet, tweeted by him. So when you go to chat GPT and then you say, who is Saumit Chintala? So it, it has given something. For example, Saumit Chintala is a research scientist at OpenAI. First of all, he doesn't work for OpenAI. Okay, fine. And a couple of hours later, when I tried the same thing, it gave me an answer. Okay, Swami Chintala is a software engineer, researcher in the field of artificial intelligence. I believed it. He worked in deep learning. I believed it. And suddenly I'm looking at the last paragraph and then it says he has worked in the several deep learning PyTorch libraries and it said PyTorch. So I was like, okay, fine. Looks like everything is correct. Then I went back to him and I said, you know what? Looks like they have fixed the problem. And then currently I see who actually Swami Chintala is. And then he points out that he has never got a PhD, which is just the starting line of the second paragraph, which says Chintala received his PhD, which did not happen. Next, he said he was never involved with Element AI. Now the problem is because I saw a couple of facts in this document or the response that ChatGPT gave me, I automatically assumed that the entire document or entire response from the ChatGPT is correct. Now you can blame me for being a dumb human being who believed in whatever chat GPT gave me, or we can also talk about how this is a big problem. So the problem right now that I'm going to highlight here is it's not when chat GPT works fine. Chat GPT is amazing. I've made a lot of tutorials about chat GPT. The problem is when chat GPT does not work fine and it doesn't tell you that I do not know, rather it makes up something, gives it to you. How many of those instances we as human being have learned to validate because we strongly believe in every single response from chat GPT. Take for an example, yesterday I made a tutorial about um, five use cases of chat GPT. And one of the tutorial is how you can make a virtual machine like a Linux VM inside chat GPT. Now the problem with this is I do not know exactly whether chat GPT is running my command inside the virtual machine or chat GPT is pretending that there is a virtual machine and then giving the response what a virtual machine would give. In both the cases, it is a very impressive piece of technology, but one from the other one makes a huge difference. So now when we talk about chat GPT hallucination, it is very important for us to acknowledge, first of all, chat GPT can always 
can always throw some BS in in a very good coherent text. Would you know how to capture it? Like I don't have a solution for now at least, but I'll the one thing I would say is at this point, chat GPT is not a drop in replace for, for Google for everything. So that's another problem. So when I said chat GPT could replace Google, it is in a programming context where I can get a text that is, uh, for example, um, like a program that can translate into one another program. Like for example, I can ask a question, it can translate and all these things. But is it a drop in replacement for Google at this point? No. Why? Chat GPT can hallucinate, which is a big, big problem because you would automatically assume something is true. Second, Chat GPT is not connected to internet at this point. So like th this is the entire set of problems that we see with Chat GPT and its hallucination because there is no way that we can tell Chat GPT to validate or there is no way we can validate at this point unless you literally take the content, content that was delivered to you and then go back and ask, like for example, in this case, I literally literally tweeted to Samit Chintala and asked, this is the response. And then he came back to me and said he has never had a PhD. And the worst part is I never bothered to go on to his LinkedIn or Wikipedia. I don't know if he has a Wikipedia, but I, did, I didn't do those due diligence to validate in the first place. Once again, like you can always point it out to the human being, like in this case, it is me and then say, you know what, you are a dumb human being. You didn't bother to validate whether it is a fake news or real news. But in the world where already where we have a lot of fake news problems, this is concerning. This is concerning because now this is a mainstream tool. Everybody is so pumped up and excited about this tool. But the problem is not a lot of people would strongly believe or uh, would think that anything that comes from this tool should not be trusted by default. Like for example, if you are going to use this full tool for a medical advice, it's, it's, it's absolutely worst. If you're going to use this tool for any legal advice, it's absolutely worst. At this point, you can use this for everything. That is something that you can validate creative writing. Now the question is why chat GPT should even hallucinate hallucination, like very similar, like what human beings have is part of our creative process. For example, if chat GPT has to creatively create a coherent text, like for example, you ask chat GPT, give me something in a Shakespeare stone. Give me something in Mark Twain's tone. That is only possible because ChatGPT can hallucinate. The problem is when ChatGPT starts hallucinating for facts, for example, GPT uh, or OpenAI, the company that has created the model has given us data around hallucination, the large language model hallucination. So if you see compared to GPT-3, instruct GPT, like chat GPT, instruct GPT is the predecessor for chat GPT. Chat GPT is in fact like built on top of instruct GPT or like slightly modified version of chat instruct GPT. So compared to GPT three instruct GPT produces less far imitative falsehoods and are less toxic. We also conduct human evaluations on our APA prompt distribution and find that instruct GPT makes up facts, hallucinates, less often and generates more appropriate output. Now, what does it mean? It means, first of all, GPT-3 hallucinates more than Instruct GPT, which is something that people do not often talk about because when you are using GPT-3 in production, you do not know now how much it is hallucinating. Cool. Second, Instruct GPT, based on which GPT is built, hallucinates less often. You can also see here, GPT-0.414, Instruct GPT-0.71, 0.17 so it's almost like three times or two times lesser than GPT the I don't know what GPT is this let's assume this is GPT 3 but the point here is chat GPT hallucinates chat GPT's hallucination has been acknowledged by open AI hallucination is a problem in natural language generation whether it is abstractive summarization or large language model now how do you see this as a customer or a are an applied AI creator or user or whatever. The first thing that you should keep in mind is chat GPT can hallucinate. That's something that you need to keep in mind. Like, let me give you a very quick demo. So this is something that I shared yesterday. For example, if I say, um, what is open AI BERT? Okay. When I say what is open AI BERT? So it says open AI BERT is the model name that is developed by open AI. Now BERT is not developed by OpenAI. Just because I asked a question OpenAI BERT, ChatGPT has very cleverly made it up that BERT is from OpenAI. This is an example of hallucination. 
next let me ask a different question now so i'm going to say uh, give me five models created by open ai so i have asked chat gpt to give me five models created by open ai now when you see these models robo school let's go search for robo school so, robo school okay in this case it is open ai cool so this is this is basically how you validate like i can i can again ask give me 10 models created by open ai with links okay it cannot give me links cool with with docs with the docs okay i've asked for with the docs i don't know if it is going to give me anything new cpd2 robo school open a microscope dq1 evolution strategies okay it it is doing something right you can just go copy every single thing and then go paste it and then verify it this is how you can verify this is one way where hallucination happened like just like we saw we saw chomit Samit Chintala's example, we saw when we say open AI BERT, it makes up stuff. The other interesting example that I wanted to highlight uh, is, for example, yesterday I made a video tutorial where I said like chat GPT is really good in translating code. So now when I ask chat GPT to translate a Python code to R, it does very well. Like for example, I can literally say um, import RE, okay, translate this Python code to R. Uh, import re re dot search of something something let's say hello comma text and then it's going to tell me that i can use grep in r and then it can translate this is perfect now with this mindset if i think that everything chat gpt gives me is perfect then i'm a dumb guy because now i'm going to copy another set of the code translate this code this python code to R and I'm pasting a code which uses hugging face transformers library. Now let's see what chat GPT is doing. So chat GPT has automatically assumed that there is a library called transformers in R CRAN, which in case is true. There is a library called transformers in CRAN, but that is not hugging face transformers library. It's something totally random. And it has very cleverly known that it has to replace the equal to arrow sign, which is the assignment operator in R like equal to is also there but it has literally taken it and then done something but this entire core is complete bs because this will not work in r even this anything remotely like this does not exist because transformers from hugging face does not exist unless there are certain wrappers available but that this is not how it looks like so now this is another chat gpt hallucination because you assume that okay i did a smaller example and i assumed that chat gpt gives me the right code which in this case is correct but the problem is now when something wrong happens, you never know that something wrong is happening unless chat GPT itself tells you that this is not possible. Like for example, I can say, what are some top um, news in 2022? So now chat GPT will of course tell me that I cannot give you because I, my model has been trained until 2021 and I don't have latest information. I can say, what is the current time? And now it's going to say, you know, I cannot give because I don't have access to internet and all these things. So unless until ChatGPT tells us explicitly that ChatGPT cannot provide an information, it is not easily or evidently possible for us to assume that something that we are getting has got BS in it. So now, very good, a lot of information, ChatGPT, hallucination, we saw some scores from InstructGPT as well. So what can we do about it? What can we do about it? I don't have a perfect answer for that, but the answer that I have right now is, do not use ChatGPT for any factual information. Use ChatGPT for programming, use ChatGPT where you need creative writing, use ChatGPT where you can use ChatGPT as a Google replacement in certain contexts, but ChatGPT is not guaranteed to give you factual information. I don't think even OpenAI claims that. Um, so it can say that um, you, you can see they keep on giving this message, but the problem is like people always test the boundaries. So do not use ChatGPT for factual information. ChatGPT is not um, just your Wikipedia content. In fact, ChatGPT has got Wikipedia, Reddit, um, Hacker News, a lot more other content, like even like Elon Musk recently tweeted that ChatGPT has access to uh, Twitter data and then we have paused it and all these things. So bottom line, 
do not use chat gpt as a factual engine anything that comes out of chat gpt please make sure that you validate it because otherwise you may not know that there is chat gpt hallucination part of the text and it is complete bs and you could be using that bs and something that you're going to present so you would look like a fool not chat gpt in the first place third i think open ai has to come up with a better strategy to reduce hallucination i think the strategy that they have uh, advocated here is that fine tuning supervised fine tuning reduces hallucination but that is very domain specific for example if they release chat gpt you can take it and then fine tune it in your business context but it may not be applicable for another business context that's that's one of the, one another thing that we could see that it reduces hallucination but overall for now while you are using chat gpt or while your friends are using chat gpt make them aware about chat gpt hallucination and that's the only way we can get um, we can use chat gpt in the right way not um, use anything that comes out of chat gpt as um, as you know like a factual information i hope this video was helpful to you in learning about chat gpt hallucinations how to view the output of chat gpt hallucinations if you have any questions let me know in the comment section otherwise see you in the next video peace